Now there's a huge amount of energy stored in water and uh, one way that we can actually use this to generate electricity is by using hydroelectricity where the word hydro just means water. And effectively what we have is we have a dam and this is built across the valley somewhere. And what we then do is just then over time collect rainwater up at a, a certain height. Now, um, the great thing about this is that um, this is a, a massive store of gravitational potential energy. And what we can do with this water is we let it flow through pipes, through a turbine, and once we get the turbine spinning, that can cause a generator to turn, which then generates our electricity. And obviously it then uh, keeps going down to the river and then out to the sea and so on. So the advantage of this is that it's um, almost instant electricity. Sometimes with a big power station, it takes a long time to maybe, you know, get the coal burning to kind of heat up the water to kind of generate the steam and so on. With this, all you need to do if you need a sudden increase in the amount of electricity in the national grid is you basically open a valve, the water flows through and then you get instant electricity. The other good thing about this is that sometimes there's a surplus of electricity in the national grid. So what we can then do is if um, electricity is not being needed somewhere else, we can actually then pump water back up into the higher level. And what we're then doing is storing more water up here. And that means that when we do need it, it's an easy way to actually get the extra um, surge of electricity that we need. So this one here, when you have water which has held at a height and then it flows through a turbine down to a lower level, is known as hydroelectricity. But hydroelectricity only works where you've got mountainous terrain. And actually, a lot of uh, places in the world are surrounded by the sea. So what we have over here is the sea. And over here, what we have is an estuary. So this is uh, basically a river that's flowing out um, into sea. Now, at the moment, what we have is high tide. And the good thing about tides is that they're very, very predictable. We know about one or two times a day, we're going to have the water come up and then down and then up and then down. Now, the idea behind tidal power is that you have some kind of tidal barrage. We basically leave the gates open and when the tide comes in, uh, we kind of uh, let this water level go up. What we can then do is we can shut uh, the gate and effectively as the sea goes out and the tide goes out, we then have some water which is trapped at a higher height over here. So when you get to low tide, the sea's gone out, but we still have water which is higher than the water over here. So again, we've got this store of gravitational potential energy. If we can then transfer that to get the turbine spinning, and then we have that turbine connected to a generator. So again, this is um, a really good way that could be used to generate electricity because we're not burning anything to get these turbines spinning. There are some downsides, just like there are downsides with hydroelectricity. First of all, this can only work in certain locations. So you've obviously got to be by the seaside. And also it's got to have the right kind of tidal estuary where you've got a big range of tides to actually make this worth building. There's also some other downsides in the fact that if you're holding all this water, you're affecting the natural environment. It might be that um, you stop ships and stuff moving through this as, as easily as they did beforehand. You might be flooding other areas and therefore changing the ecosystem. And that might then affect things like birds, which uh, maybe would have used that ground beforehand um, you know, to live in or to, to reproduce. And you're then going to be changing the ecosystem and having this effect on the, 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 the very much the local wildlife. Just like if you've got hydroelectricity, you're going to be flooding the upland area to store this water. But there's also something that we have at sea, which isn't just the fact that the tides go in and out a couple of times a day, but all the time we've always got waves out at sea. So here we have a couple of ways that we can actually generate electricity using waves. Because even if the tide isn't going in or out, there's going to be waves coming into the shore. Now, there's, um, these are still very much sort of prototype things. These aren't really as widespread as things like hydroelectricity or wind power. Now, the first one over here, here we've got the sea, and this is uh, the, the side, the seashore over here. And what you can do is you can build something maybe out of concrete with a turbine at the top. Now, as you've got the waves coming in and out, that's going to cause the water level all the time to be going up and down. And that means if you've got a layer of air trapped over here, it's going to be pushing the air in and out and if you have that going through a turbine, we then get the turbine starting to rotate. Again, this rotating turbine causes a generator to move, which is what we then use to generate our electricity. So all the time we've got waves coming in, it's gonna be causing this chamber of air to increase and decrease inside, and that's gonna push air in and out of this spinning turbine. Another way that it could work is you have this kind of floating boom on the surface of the water. And this, can, this doesn't have to be by the shore, it can be a little bit further out where you've got bigger waves. And effectively, if you've got something which is floating on the surface, if you have a hinge, 
So maybe you've got a hinge here and a hinge here. As the wave moves through that, it's going to cause the thing on the surface to keep flexing. And if you can then uh, basically take some of the kinetic energy in the hinge, you might have that connected to some kind of generator. The fact we might have um, a moving wire by a magnet that's going to generate a current. What we can then do is use this way here of generating electricity. In fact, there are lots of different designs and it's the kind of thing that they could ask you a question about in the exam where it's maybe talking about how could this way of um, generating electricity be suitable for certain things. Again, it's brilliant because you're not burning anything so there's no CO2 emissions, but some of the downsides to wave power are that it's going to affect the shoreline if you're building these things by the shore, so that's going to affect whatever's there at the moment. And also at the moment these are relatively small scale, so they don't generate as much electricity as things like wind turbines, solar farms and also hydroelectricity. So there's just a few extra methods that we can actually use to generate green electricity as it's called because there's no, nothing being burnt, there are no CO2 emissions, and these are renewable resources. And the more things we have like this around the country, the more we can actually do to reduce climate change and the effects that that's going to have on all of us. So there we go, just uh, a little bit more information there. Thank you.